Hi, I'm Zenya from Total Prepare. Since 2012, we've helped schools, families, and other organizations across Canada to get prepared. In this video, we'll be focusing on the ins and outs of getting prepared for an elementary, middle, or high school. We understand that as a school administrator or PAC member, you're kept very busy. As such, please find timestamps on the screen to help you get the exact information you need as efficiently as possible. Schools can be as diverse as the children they educate, but in general, there are three ways in which they get prepared. Some schools have supplies prepared for individual students. This usually takes the form of a Ziploc bag with an assortment of supplies inside, along with the comfort items like small toys or a letter from the child's guardians. This style of preparedness is most common in elementary schools and works great as a complement to other options. These kits are usually not enough for more than a few hours to a day, however, so we do recommend supplementing them with other supply options. Kits like these are usually supplied by the child's guardians. Total Prepare can ease this process for parents and administrators by collecting orders for pre-built kits that have a five-year shelf life. All kits can then be shipped to the school together with a complete list of the children they are for. Classroom kits are the second type of preparation we commonly see from schools. These compact kits are great for general preparedness, but also serve as a lockdown kit. They come complete with a toilet option, as well as some food and water for students and staff. Generally speaking, these come with 24 hours of supplies, but can be customized for longer duration. The most common option for preparing a school is bulk supplies meant to be divided for the school as a whole. These supplies are commonly stored in a shipping container outside of the main building to keep the supplies accessible in an emergency. This method can take advantage of bulk ordering and is usually the most comprehensive and economical way to get prepared. Individual school districts may have their own list of recommendations for what a school should have on hand in an emergency situation. And if not, each province's Ministry of Education will have their own list. Total Prepare has worked with many schools over the years and we have sourced all kinds of emergency supplies. In this video, however, we'll focus on the three items we get the most questions about. Every emergency kit needs non-perishable food that is safe for everyone to eat. When preparing for a large group, calorie ration bars are the most common choice. They come in 3,600 calorie packs, each containing nine individual 400 calorie bars. They last for five years in storage and can handle being stored in fluctuating temperatures. Many schools have allergy concerns, and in these cases, having a few allergen-friendly bars on hand for the so students is prudent to make sure they don't go hungry or get sick. Products like O-Bars share the five-year shelf life of regular emergency bars, but are free of nuts, dairy, gluten, soy, eggs, and many other allergens. Water is an essential, no matter the kit. Bottled options are easy to portion and can be found in many stores, but they have short shelf lives and don't do well when stored in uninsulated containers. Water pouches are a very standard option for emergency preparedness because they can tolerate fluctuating temperatures, are easy to portion, and have a five-year shelf life. This is the most popular choice for smaller schools or individual classrooms. Canned options have a shelf life of up to 50 years and are easier to open and set down between sips. They're a really set it and forget it choice that works out to be economical over the life of the water, though the upfront cost is a little higher. Finally, we have water storage tanks. These are the most cost-effective way to store a lot of water for emergencies. Refilling them is low cost and affordable stabilizers can be added to give the water inside a five-year shelf life. Do be sure to secure the tank against toppling and keep in mind that you will need to add disposable cups to your supplies to help distribute the water from a tank. Still, even with that, this is by far the best option we've seen to prepare for large numbers of people. What goes in must come out. Don't forget to consider emergency toilet options for students and staff if you can't access the usual facilities. Portable toilet sets are a great option for this, though shovels and garbage bags can do in a pinch. Remember to pack lots of hand sanitizer and plenty of toilet paper to keep things sanitary, and to look into safe disposal of human waste in your area for after the event. Most sources, including Total Prepare, recommend having supplies on hand for at least 72 hours or three days of self-sufficiency. Over the years, however, we've noticed that this guideline is not always within financial reach for schools working with limited resources. In these instances, we believe that some supplies are better than none and work with the 150-25% model. It plans for 100% of students to still be in the school's care on day one of an emergency, 
50% of students to still need resources on the second day, and 25% of students to remain on the third day. As most parents are pretty eager to pick up their children in emergencies, we feel this is a reasonable estimate. I must stress once again that this is not a replacement for having 72 hours worth of supplies on hand, but is a good first step when that goal is too much of a stretch. Before I jump into how much food and water to prepare, I want to mention that the easiest way to figure out these quantities is to call or email the pros at Total Prepare. We'll work with you to create a no-obligation quote that covers the needs to your specific situation. In emergency preparedness, we think of food in terms of calories. Calories are a way of measuring how much sustenance different foods give you. If you're planning a diet or for long-term nutrition, other important factors like protein, vitamins, nutrients come into play, but for a short-term emergency supplies, calories are king. Every child is different, with toddlers needing about 1,000 calories and active teens closer to, say, 3,600. The minimum recommendation is to have at least 1,200 calories each day per person, but more is always better. When it comes to water, it is recommended to have two liters per person each day for drinking. This adds up quickly, which is why we generally recommend large water storage tanks for schools. Many schools will portion water to give each student just a few water pouches each day, less than a quarter of the recommended amount. Anything is better than nothing, but whenever possible, do try for two liters. Let's do a quick example of what it might look like to equip 500 students and 20 staff with food and water. We have a total of 520 people, each needing at least 1,200 calories of food and two liters of water each day for three days. In this case, we would need 1,872,000 calories minimum and around 3,120 liters of water. Calorie ration bars come in packs of 3,600 calories, so we would need 520 ration packs and about three of these large water storage tanks. But let's say our hypothetical school has been fundraising and doesn't quite have the budget for these supplies. We might recommend the 150-25% method. In this case, we would have 520 people on day one, half or 260 people on day two, and for the final day, we would only be expecting 130 people to be remaining on site. Add those numbers together and we effectively need one day's worth of food and water for 910 people. 910 people times 1,200 minimum calories per day is 1,092,000 calories. Divide this by our 3,600 calorie bars, and we get, uh, then this plan would only require 303 ration packs, much more affordable than the previous method. Likewise, we can take our 910 people, times it by 2 liters of water, and we'll need a minimum of 1,820 liters or just two of these water storage tanks. Those are the most common methods, but if you don't feel like working it out alone, please call us at Total Prepare. We are always happy to help people plan their preparedness supplies without any pressure or obligation to buy. Emergency supplies do need changing out every so often. The shelf lives of your items will depend on what solutions were chosen, but as a general rule, you want to check on your supplies at least once a year. Write expected expiration dates somewhere clearly visible, and check items for any signs of tampering or pests. As a general rule of thumb, these are the items that will need replacement at some point. Food, water, first aid, hand warmers, light sticks, wet wipes, and batteries. For water, the water itself doesn't go bad, but bacteria can grow in your water storage over time, and containers can break down into the water, leaving plastic residue. With first aid, unless otherwise noted, Health Canada gives all first aid items a five-year shelf life. As always, if you have any questions about preparing for schools, feel free to reach out to our team at 778-265-5331 or hello at totalprepare.ca. All the products listed in this video are available at totalprepare.ca. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video helpful. Bye for now, and as always, don't forget to be prepared, not scared.